Welcome to another video from Your IT Explained. In this video, we're going to go through the redistribution between EIGRP and OSPF for the ANASI exam. So we're going to be posed with a few potential problems and we're going to troubleshoot them in ways that you may be expected to know, understand and be able to perform on your own. So what you see on the screen is all configured so far. We've got the IP addresses configured, the uh, routing protocols configured. What we haven't done is the redistribution between the two protocols on router 5. So let's just do a quick verification. If I go to router 4, I'll open up a console session. And let's see what is going on on this device. Let me just clear that a little bit and do a show IP route. So on router 4, which is over here, we can see that it has an OSPF route that it's learned because it's not directly connected being 172.16.0.0. So OSPF is up and running and it's got obviously the connections for its local subnet. So it's all working as we would expect uh, and hope. So definitely everything's configured, OSPF and EIGRP, just the redistribution between the two is not configured. So router 3 and 4 won't be able to reach router 1 and 2 at the moment, or those networks on, or vice versa either. Um, I'll just prove that, so let's go to router 3, and do a quick little uh, ping to 10.00.1. So that's this interface over here on router 1. Yep, and it's going to fail, so I'll just end that. Okay, so let's dive straight into the configuration now of the route redistribution. So, it's going to reload, uh, let's clear this, sorry, a little bit, and now our configure terminal, and let's go, because I can, I want to do it both ways, I want to redistribute ERGRP into OSPF, and OSPF into ERGRP. So, first, let's go ERGRP into OSPF. That's what I'm going to configure. So all the ERGRP routes are going to be redistributed into OSPF. And to do that, you go into the protocol that you're redistributing into. So I'm going to go to router OSPF process ID 1. That's what I'm running. And in OSPF, I'm going to redistribute ERGRP into it. So now, to start to type redistribute, you can see we've got a, a list of options here that we can choose from. We want to redistribute EIGRP. Autonomous system 100 is what I'm using for EIGRP. And then there's a few other options. Hopefully you identify the one from the previous theory video and what we're meant to use. But what you can actually do is just leave it like that and press enter. And it's not going to have any issues. So now if I go onto router 3, open up a console there. Let's have a look. Is it now picking up the ERGRP routes that have been redistributed into OSPF? Show IP route. Yep, sure enough, we've got these OSPF external type 2 routes here, which are those networks we can see over on the left. So you might be wondering, well, why aren't they coming up as ERGRP routes? Well, that's because that's what redistribution does. It redistributes other routes into OSPF, so it makes them OSPF routes. And we just dis distinguish these from regular routes by adding external type 2 or external type 1 um, to denote them, which you can see from the codes in the table up here in the IP routing table. Okay, and it, you might be asking, well, well, you didn't do that keyword. You didn't specify up here on router 5. You didn't type in subnets, right? Um, show the list, subnets. And let me just show you something very quickly. We'll go end and go show, run, and begin at OSPF. And now at OSPF, have a look at this. Redistribute EIGLP 100 subnets. This is now the default behavior. It'll automatically add in subnets. So you can type it out if you want, but you don't actually have to. So most modern devices will just add that in for you now so that it'll include um, classless addresses because that's just, it, it, there's no point not to anymore. All right, so now let's go the other way. We now want to go OSPF into ERGRP. 
So let's go configure terminal and then router ERGRP because we're redistributing into ERGRP autonomous system 100 and then the same thing redistribute OSPF process ID 1 and then we do have other options but I'll just press enter same as we did on the other device right now we are hoping that the OSPF routes have been redistributed into ERGRP just like we did on the other way if I go to router 2 open up a console session let's have a look show IP route it doesn't have it it hasn't picked up any new routes it's only got those connected um, and local routes so it would have ERGRP routes as well but the only two networks are directly connected that's why they're not showing as let me just show you on router 1 so you can see that there's definitely ERGRP process running so I go end and show IP route here we are ERGRP 10 10 10 0 slash 24 down here router 1 has learned it through ERGRP so it's definitely up and running no worries no issues there but it's not picking up the OSPF routes and this is because of what we covered off on in the theory lesson previously that is because when you redistribute into ERGRP the default metric is infinity and you, if it's a default metric of infinity that means that the metric is unreachable it, you, that's why the routes are not coming up but the other way when you redistribute into OSPF the default metric is actually 20 let's just verify that so if I go to router 3 or 4 so I go 3 let's have a look so this line here it's picking up that 10 10 10 0 slash 24 network it's got an admin distance of 110 and the default metric of 20 has been applied as you can see now the only time that's different is if you're redistributing BGP into OSPF in which case the default metric is actually 1 right so that's the difference between these two protocols so if we want to fix this, we do want OSPF routes to go into ERGRP. Let's troubleshoot. Let's just go router 5. Let's end. And let's just have a look what's currently in the config. So show run. Let's begin at ERGRP. And we can see we've got the networks advertised, the autonomous systems specified, and then we're just redistributing. Same is pretty much what we're doing in OSPF although OSPF does have that extra default subnets word but we know from the previous lesson that ERGRP needs more information because the infinity metric is not going to help us at all we need to actually specify the metric so let's do that now configure terminal router ERGRP autonomous system 100 redistribute OSPF process ID 1 just as we did before but now let's have a look what other options we have so you could you could do this through a route map if you want to as well and you may be post scenarios where they are doing it through a route map in your examinations or whenever you're working um, as a network engineer but what we are carrying what we're going to do here in this specific environment is we're just going to specify it per route or per redistribution on the device so we're just going to go straight away to metric now let's I'm just going to go through the same way I would recommend you do this and you just type in question mark after each line because there's a fair bit to get through so firstly it's going to ask for the bandwidth metric in kilobits per second kilobits per second so I'm going to do 1 million 1 1 2 3 1 2 3 because 1 million kilobits a second is a gigabit per second so I'm happy with that. What's next? EIGRP delay metric in 10 microsecond units. I'm happy with just a no delay pretty much, so let's just go with the 10 microsecond um, delay. Next, reliability metric where 255 is 100% reliable. Well, I'm pretty happy with my configuration here in this lab environment for it to be I'm going to say it's 100% reliable right I'm I'm happy to leave it like that next EIGRP effective bandwidth metric where 255 is 100% loaded 
Well, I, as I said, I'm pretty happy with how it's all configured, so I'm going to go not loaded at all. Just go down to one. Now, lastly, the MTU of the path. Now, again, this will change depending on your environment. So in mine, I'm happy to just keep it as the, the standard 1500. But if you're using additional headers or anything like that, then you may have to reduce this to a different number depending on what your um, what your specific scenario is. All right, what's after that? Well, then it just goes back to those other options of match and route map. So from here, let's press enter. So we've done redistribute OSPF one metric one million one two five five one fifteen hundred. Now let's now that we've done that. This is on router five, by the way, because this is all happening on this device that connects the two routing protocols together. Now let's have a look if these devices, router one and two, are picking up the OSPF routes. I'll go to router two. And let's just refresh the same command, show IP route. Voila. We are now picking up ERGRP external routes, as you can see here. So they've got the 170 admin distance because they are external ERGRP routes, not internal. So if we go to router one, let's have a look at the difference there. So router one, it's picked them up as well, but here's just a regular ERGRP route, which has a admin distance of 90, but these have 170. So this is, again, referring back to the very first lesson in this series, where we went through admin distance. It's You gotta have that holistic approach to an RC. You gotta understand at least the basics of everything in here, so that you get the full picture when troubleshooting. All right, and then you can see the metric afterwards. So now, hopefully, we should be able to ping between the devices. So did I try that on this yet? Router three, let's see. Router three, let's do a ping to, let's go router one, the furthest uh, interface over there. So router three, I'm gonna ping 10.10, oh sorry, 10.0.0.1. Success. Excellent. So it's all working um, as we would have hoped. So now we've successfully done route redistribution or mutual route redistribution between ERGRP and OSPF. Now it can get more complicated if you start to throw in route maps and uh, defining a default metric, which then applies to others. There's many different ways to do this, but this is just the basic um, configuration and probably the most common uh, fault that people will run in, into with this. Now, we're just going to go into something a little bit different, and it's the way that the routes are redistributed into OSPF specifically. So let's have a look at router three and router four on the screen. And if they want to reach the 10.000 network, you would think that router three should be advertising a better path, or it should be saying, I am the better choice. So if we've got a client, let's say an imaginary little client that's just hanging off of um, router three and four, and it wants to reach the 10.0.0.0 network, it should go via router three every time because that's a shorter path. Router four just adds an extra hop going via router three. But because of what we've done, they will both advertise it the exact same way. Let's just confirm. So on router three, if we look at the routing table up here, I'll actually I'll just I'll rerun the command so you can see it again. So we want to reach that 10.000 network. It's got an admin distance of 110, as that's uh, the default admin distance of an OSPF external type two or external routes. They take on the same admin distance of uh, regular OSPF. And then it's got the default metric of 20. Now if I go to router 4, let's have a look on here. Open up a console and show IP route. If we have a look at the routes to that same network, it's pretty much the exact same. It's got that 110 admin distance and a metric of 20. So router three and four are saying, hey, it's the exact same whether you go via three or four, it's gonna be uh, just as quick. 
which we know is not true. We know router 4 is further away. And so if you want to configure it to be more specific and accurate, this is what you do. So let's go back to router 5 where the redistribution happens. That's where we're going to fix this issue. Because first, let's have a look on router 3 and 4. We see these are OSPF external type 2 routes. Now external type 2 will just use the same metric as the route when it was redistributed. So for OSPF, it uses a default metric of 20 when um, redistributing routes in, unless it's BGP, which is one. That's all it will use on every device. External type 1, on the other hand, if we look up in the table here, it uses the default metric plus the internal metric. And so that's going to be more accurate. And that's what we want to, that's probably what we want here. So if I go to route of 5, we're going to go out of this one because we're redistributing into OSPF again. So redistribute ERGRP, Autonomous System 100. Um, let's just type it in, subnets. Doesn't matter if we do or don't. And now we have this other option here being metric type. So this is where you specify type 1 or type 2. So let's change it. Let's make them type 1. Because the default, if you don't specify, is type 2. So that's why we see those on router 3. It's um, OSPF external type 2. And on router 4, it's external type 2. Even though we didn't set anything specific to that before, the default is to use type 2. We've now manually changed it to type 1. So let's go back to router 3. Let's just refresh this. And now we can see it's external type 1. Same on router 4, refresh, external type 1. Now, router 3, we can see here the metric has changed. So admin distance is still the same, but the metric is now 30 because it's done the uh, default external metric plus the internal. So plus a 10 metric here. And now if we go to router 4, we can see it's now 40. So they are now different. It's still got that 20 plus the internal metrics of 10 here and then 10 here. So now, if there's a device hanging off of 3 and 4, router 3 and 4 that is, it will now know to go via router 3 if it wants to reach that network. And so that's about it. That's all that we really need to cover off on for EIGRP and OSPF redistribution. It's really quite simple. Once you just wrap your head around the concept, um, I will refer back to my previous example of comparing it to conversion. So if you struggle with the concept of route redistribution, think of it as, as route conversion. That's all you're essentially doing is you're converting from one routing protocol into the other. Uh, aside from that, the future videos will just go through some of the other uh, redistribution between different routing protocols. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.